This is one of the most elegant and thoughtfully designed keyboards I've ever tried. And it's actually so stunning visually that I'm beginning to ask, is the end game near? We look at a lot of keyboards in this channel, but today we're taking a step past the entry level and kind of into another realm. Of course, there's some other aspects to consider other than looks and desk appeal, but we'll find out all of that in just a moment. This is the Freya by Wuche Studio. You've heard of Mellotrix, right? Well, this is the real brand behind the operation, and they're known for their higher end keyboard offerings like the Promise 87, amongst others. This keyboard definitely screams premium, even throughout the unboxing process. You can tell how much effort they put into it with the amusing Norse mythology influenced designs. There's even a drawer. <laughs> the Freya features a module system, allowing you to use a slider, a four key cluster, there's another four key macro to replace the slider, or an LCD screen knob. Oh, and guess what? That screen is a touchscreen too. What? The hot swap PCB I have here is a tri-mode flex cut version, although you can choose from a wired only and a non-flex cut option for each. One of the more interesting inclusions in the Freya is the new split plate design featuring an aluminum outer and a PC interior plate. This is a well-welcomed innovation. We also got the pour-on portfolio with all the needed foams too. Okay, now we're getting closer to the board. This thing is encased in a hard case with buckles and a little bit more branding. Opening it up, we've got the Wuche Studio stabs, rubber feet, we've got two 2250 milliamp hour batteries for the wireless version, and a USB-C cable. Then we finally reveal the Freya. It's a stunning keyboard. It's a 68% via compatible board with perky RGB. What we have here is a prototype, so there are some finishing touches that will be applied to the final production versions that you may receive. But on first impressions, We've got our knob, which has a tactile dial, and the badge on the front face. The aluminum finish really is impressive on this anodized case. There are even silver chamfers bordering the openings of the board. Now alongside the case, you can spot a beautiful profile with three layers of separation that are almost reminiscent of wings and go perfectly with the Freya logo featured on the back weight. Speaking of back weight, it's covered in a plastic wrap upon arrival, but that cues us for a nice little plastic peel, so that's all right. The back weight has a very reflective mirrored finish. It looks pretty clean for now, but if you don't get those rubber feet on soon, that may not last for long. <laughs> Opening it up and flipping it over to the inside of the board, we also have an internal weight as well, which will install the batteries beneath. Now after that moment, I caught my first glimpse of the new spring-loaded mounting system. It also has gaskets as well to support it, resulting in a relatively bouncing toppy feel, but it's not as bouncy as I thought it might be with those big old springs. I loaded up my PCB with the stabs and placed my switches, which are the Gateron Unicorn Linear Switches, pre -lubed. Selected my module of choice, which was the slider, since I'm a musician and a recording engineer. So it kind of reminds me a little bit of like a mixing console. It's really simple to install it, if you remember that the screw is already inside. But once I got it installed, it glides really smooth and it looks awesome, providing even more golden accents alongside the knob screen. That blue and gold combo is pretty slick, I'll be honest. After plugging in all my daughter boards, Eureka, we got some RGB, we got power, and boom, keycaps. You like that? Now it's time for a sound test. I'll make sure to double back with my thoughts and opinions right on the other side. Let's go. The Freya is a next level keyboard in almost every sense of the word. This is the type of board that keeps the hobby interesting in my personal opinion. Its design and innovative modules like the slider and knob screen add a peculiar feel to the face of the Freya, but it's different in a good way. One thing to note is that if I were you, I'd likely order the PVD back weight instead of the mirrored one, simply because it's so prone to scratching unless you're extremely, extremely careful. And I typically am and I'm still pretty nervous. <laughs> in terms of performance and sound, the Freya sounds very nice. The best configuration is likely using all the foam included, but it doesn't sound horrible without foam, especially if you get the non-flex cut PCB. Even with my flex cut PCB though, all it took was the PCB back foam and now I love it. <laughs> There's a tiny bit of case ping in certain spots due to a bit of hollowness, but it's very mild and likely remedied from foam. And I guess it's up to you if that's concerning. But if you go non-flex cut, I'm pretty sure you'll be in the clear. The knob is cool as usual, and this is one of the cooler screen implementations in a keyboard recently. And there are features that will be accessed by this app that I imagine in the production units you'll have a little bit more freedom with. 
but there's still one important question to answer. Is this thing worth grabbing and who is it for? Wait, that's like two questions. But there's two type of people that I recommend this for. I'd say this is a great collection piece for those who spend money often in the keyboard hobby and really love the features and appearance. The other person that I would recommend it to would be just anyone who likes it and wants a new keyboard. Pretty simple answer, right? <laughs> I mean, it's not the most affordable board, but I'm not gonna sit up here and act like it's a waste of money because it's actually pretty sick. Everything from the unboxing all the way to typing on it, I feel like it's pretty impressive. Of course, there are many cheaper options out there. Even Mellotrix offerings are punching pretty hard right under this price point. But if saving money is your main objective, the Freya likely isn't for you. Let's be honest. But if you got it to spend and want a very nice typable piece of artwork, this could be for you. It's a pretty special board, man. The Freya starts at $429.99, but if you wanted to get just the wired soldered version, it'll be a little bit cheaper than that. Not to forget there's two versions of the Freya. This one here is the Ultra. On the standard version, you won't have this uh, the option for this module here on the side. So you even get a smaller version of the board. So it's about here, over. Which is actually pretty cool, depending on which one you'd like. I'm kind of digging this slider though. If you're catching this video before February 21st, 2024, then you still got time to grab the Freya. The group buy actually ends on the 21st of February. So I would head over to the link down in the description right now and check out if you really, really want this keyboard. Thanks for watching today's video and I hope it was helpful in some type of way. If it was, please make sure to hit that subscribe button for more videos like this one. And if not, at least hit the like button to help support the channel. My name is Zeke of Zeke Digital and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.